Deep learning relies heavily on a computer's ability to accurately and efficiently differentiate functions. Automatic differentiation is at the heart of every deep learning framework. All we have to do is define a sequence of operations, apply them to specific values, and seemingly perform magical computations to calculate derivatives. I've always been intrigued as to how all this happens under the hood. So, I decided to study this topic in detail to understand everything about automatic differentiation and build a very basic autodiff engine from scratch in Julia. By the end of this video, we'll be able to, using our own code, define a function, evaluate it using some input values, and get the derivatives of it with respect to the inputs in a way very similar to that in PyTorch. I would like to clarify one thing. The code that I have written is nowhere near as optimized as PyTorch, and my main focus here is education. So I've kept the code base small and simple. But before discussing the code, let's look into the theory behind automatic differentiation. I'll start with a very simple function involving addition and multiplication operations. This function can also be written as a series of operations one after the other. A better way to understand this is by representing these operations as a graph. The input variables a and b form two leaf nodes. The intermediate node is generated by adding these two input nodes. And finally we get the output by multiplying c with b. Let's now get derivatives the autodiff way. Everything starts with the output node. We know that the derivative with respect to f is always 1. Next, the variable across the multiply operation comes into play. From the multiply rule, we know derivatives with respect to c and b. Finally, the lights turn on the addition operation. For the derivative with respect to a, we apply the chain rule as usual to get the answer. However, for derivative with respect to b, we already have something from the multiplication operation. In this case, the value coming in from the addition operation just gets added to the previous value. If you look carefully, this is just another way to visualize a chain rule. Well, enough with all this theory. Let's just dive into coding all this up now. I'm starting very simple and just looking to enable this graph formation and forward computations. The whole graph is made up of two things, nodes and operations. To define node, I'll be using a mutable struct and store the values using an attribute called value. To capture the graph structure, I'll hold the information regarding parents of this node. So for example, a node C, this parent attribute will hold A and B. I would like to mention that type declarations in Julia are optional, but I always use them as they help catch weird bugs. In order to use this struct, I also need to write a constructor. This constructor will accept a value and store it in the value attribute, leaving parents as empty lists. However, if you notice, intermediate variables like C in the graph has parents. In order to create these intermediate nodes, I need to define another constructor accepting value and parents as inputs. Now I have the capability to define nodes. Next thing is to enable addition and multiplication support for our custom struct variable. In Julia, all the operations are defined in a base module, which allows me to define the addition and multiplication on our custom variable type. If you look carefully, the implementation is quite straightforward. This is where I'm defining how to do addition or multiplication and then use a constructor defined before to create the intermediate nodes. So in under 20 lines of code, I have everything necessary for defining and evaluating a function. The only thing left to do is add code that will compute derivatives automatically. Very minor modification is needed for variable with just another attribute called chain rules added to facilitate the derivative computations and the constructors are modified accordingly to initialize three attributes instead of two. If you look carefully, this chain rules only come into play for the constructor which is used by the operations to create intermediate nodes. Let's see how this works for the multiplication operation. There are a fair few things to unpack in this so let's do that one by one. 
The inputs obviously form the input nodes and the operation results in an intermediate node. The way I've written this chain rule is using lambda or anonymous functions. This basically is just a compact way of writing a function. Now looking at the graph, the derivative of value with respect to value is 1. Then the derivatives across the multiplication operation with respect to variables 1 and 2 are computed using the chain rule. In the code, global grad represents this dv by dv and the multiplication is written out inside the anonymous function. So far I have defined multiplication when both are variables. Just for the sake of completeness, I'll also write functions when a variable is pre and post multiplied with a constant. All this is pretty straightforward and using a similar template, we can define the derivatives across addition operation. The only thing that changes is the way chain rule is applied. At this stage, we already have a computation graph with all the nodes and operations along with the necessary code for evaluating derivatives. Let's look at the autograd function line by line and see how it uses everything that we've built so far. The input to this function is generally an output node. In our case, it will be f. The empty dictionary will hold the derivatives of f with respect to all the intermediate and input nodes. The derivative of the output node with respect to itself is always 1. The compute function is then passed to the node f and the derivative value which is 1. Inside this function, we loop over the parents of this node, in this case that's c and b. This is where we extract and use the chain rules defined inside the operations. The if statement just checks whether a derivative with respect to the parent exists or not. In this case it doesn't, so it will create a new key and store the value. A recursive call is then made using the parent. In our case, node C has parent, so it will again get the chain rule from the addition operation and update the values of derivatives with respect to A and B. Note that B already has a value, so this new value is just added to the previous one. Finally, the gradients dictionary is returned with all the derivatives. So far, I could only do addition and multiplication. Well, that's not so interesting. However, adding support for more complex operations is very easy. Just define the operation with appropriate chain rule and you're good to go. In this, I've added sine, cosine and power operations. You can see how easy it is to expand this library. My wishlist for this project is to add support for tensors and build a simplified, easy to modify version of something like PyTorch with GPU support. So plenty of work still to be done on this, but until then, I hope you'll find this insightful. Okay, that's enough for today and I'll see you next time with another interesting topic.